There's a lot of expectation being placed on Farpoint's sci-fi shoulders. The first-person shooter represents the next big PlayStation VR blockbuster, and while there's certainly been no shortage of smaller virtual reality games since Resident Evil 7 released in January, it takes these kind of tentpole titles for the less engaged among you to pay attention. I guess the question then is, can it live up to the weight of expectation surrounding it? Well, hey everyone, I'm Sammy from Pushquare and I'm going to answer that question in this video review. But before I get into what I think, thank you so much for joining me and do consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you like what you see. I'm going to have a lot more Farpoint content going live over the course of the game's launch week and you'll find plenty more PlayStation VR and PlayStation 4 content elsewhere on the channel. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into the review. Farpoint is an enigma in some ways because it feels both very contemporary and quite old school all at the same time. So allow me to explain, if you don't know, the game's big selling point is its use of the PlayStation VR Aim Controller, a firearm shaped peripheral which you can buy bundled alongside the game. Now I'm going to do a separate review of the controller elsewhere on the channel but I am going to talk about how the gun enhances Farpoint a little later in this video, so make sure you stay tuned for that. I guess my overarching point is that the PSVR aim controller makes this game feel very fresh even though the game design doesn't really feel like it's evolved much beyond what was commonplace in the 90s. Don't get me wrong, the game is a ton of fun once it properly gets going, but it can seem quite simplistic at times, recycling samey enemy encounters and serving up some pretty barren environments. Fortunately, the sheer fact that it all takes place within virtual reality, paired with the novelty of the aforementioned PSVR aim controller, elevates it out of mediocrity. So let's get into the meat and bones of the title. You play as a pilot out to escort two scientists from a space station named the Pilgrim. I found the story to be a little awkwardly paced, so I struggled to keep up with the specifics of the story at times, but basically the pair are researching some kind of radiation anomaly near Jupiter when things go pear-shaped and pull you into an alien planet. The game really does take a little while to get going, both from a gameplay perspective and a story perspective, but much of the narrative is delivered through little data snippets that you're able to scan and decode as you explore the world. The game actually tries really hard to pack some emotional punches, and while the writing can be a little bit hammy, I found it impressive watching the way characters interact in virtual reality. You can tell that a ton of work has been put into the animations, and while the models obviously aren't on par with, say, Uncharted 4, I personally think they look pretty good, especially when you take into account that everything looks and feels right in virtual reality. I mean, sometimes there's a danger of human characters looking like giants in VR, but that's absolutely not the case here. As I alluded to earlier though, the game does take a little while to get going. Whether that's because the developer wanted to ease players into the experience or not, I'm not entirely sure, but you'll spend the first three or four levels fighting the same selection of alien type creatures, which can get a little bit tedious. Fortunately, it picks up beyond that point, introducing a wider array of environments, weapons and adversaries, so do keep that in mind as you play through. The game likes to remind you that survivors keep moving and that's good advice as you tackle the campaign. The second half is so much stronger than the first half. But the gameplay is pretty good right the way through, so armed with the PSVR aim controller you have access to pretty much all of the abilities you'd expect to find in your usual FPS game. The really cool thing about the controller is that it has two perfectly positioned analogue sticks, meaning that this isn't an on rails experience or anything like that, you're free to explore at will. Now I will say that the limitations of the PlayStation VR headset itself mean that most of the action is designed to take place in front of you, but the fact that you can strafe and go off the beaten path lends a little gravitas to the campaign beyond those kind of stationary shooters that are all the rage on PlayStation VR these days. Having said that, I do wish that the game offered a little more incentive to explore. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it could have done with a few collectibles or something like that just to stop it feeling like you're being funneled forward quite so much. But as the complexity of the shootouts increases in the latter third of the campaign, you will need to move about a lot and you're going to want to ensure that you've got some kind of turn option enabled as it's bizarrely disabled by default. 
I like the simple step option personally, which rotates you in tiny little intervals, but there are plenty of bases covered in the settings, so you just need to find out what works best for you. The PSVR aim controller really is a revelation though, it does suffer from some of the same limitations as the PlayStation Move, which means you may see a little bit of drift and it doesn't like it when you hold it directly in front of your face, obscuring the headset from the PlayStation camera, but generally I've found it works great and it feels very natural. Physically aiming down the sights as opposed to pushing a button feels amazing and when you line up that perfect headshot it just feels so satisfying. The thing that I've found playing through Farpoint is that I want to play act a little bit. Now, I'm a grown man and I stopped playing Cops and Robbers many years ago, but the thing is, when you've got the PlayStation VR aim controller in your hand and you're rushing through an army of space bugs, it's hard to fight the temptation to pretend you're a movie star, blasting your way through Beatles like the badass that you wished you were. And the weapons are really great, from the standard assault rifle right the way through to a spike cannon that fires energy surges you can detonate on will. Each armament has a kind of secondary fire like the pulse rifle which erects a shield or the shotgun that can shoot out grenades. I personally think the sound design is great and the PSVR aim controller has a lot of rumble packed into it, so it really does feel like you're firing rounds from futuristic firearms. The one problem is that a lot of the enemies are proper bullet sponges and while this does suit the encounters to some degree, I'd have liked to see the damage dialed down just a little bit if only to make me feel that bit more badass. Now the story takes about 6 hours to complete but there is a secondary arcade mode that basically allows you to play through every story mission again, this time with scores and timers attached. It's actually pretty good fun and is a smart way of getting more mileage out of the levels to keep you playing for longer. There are online leaderboards attached to these and a decent multiplier scoring system so you're going to want to play through everything again and try and get as many points as possible. But there's obviously co-op on top of that as well which I haven't been able to play properly yet due to the pre-release review environment I played in but I have high hopes for it and I'll bring you a separate video once I've had time to properly check it out. You access all of this content from a hub area which changes as you progress, little bobble heads and plushies get added to the environment over time and you're free to explore the space in between missions. While there's not really a massive amount to see and do, it does just highlight for me that little extra layer of immersion that VR enables. Like if this wasn't a virtual reality game, the menu would be exactly that, a menu. But here it's like a mini space that you can move around in which I personally think is rad. So I did say I'd talk a little bit about the PSVR aim controller itself and while I do want to do a separate video on that, I'll give you some of my more general thoughts and in short, I really like it. As I said earlier, it still shares some of the problems of the PlayStation Move itself so you can't aim behind you for example because the PlayStation camera needs to see the coloured bulb on the end but it feels really light and the controls are really well mapped and perhaps most importantly, it's extremely intuitive. There are things you can do in-game that don't need a control prompt because you do them naturally like for example blind firing over cover or leaning to aim around a corner. It just feels really good and the battery life seems great. While I'm on the last stick of my charge now I've managed to play through the entire game and a big chunk of challenge mode with only a single charge which is nice. Having said that, you can play with the DualShock 4 and it works in much the same way using the gyroscopes in the controller to help you line up your aim, but frankly for me it's just not the same and I don't think any PlayStation VR FPS that elects not to use the PSVR aim controller will be really. And honestly that's my only concern really, Sony has a history of putting out great peripherals like this only to never support them properly, and I hope that's not going to be the case here, because honestly this is an expensive proposition between the game and the controller and while there are a handful of titles that have pledged support now, I think Sony needs to ensure that there's a steady stream of games moving forwards. As for Farpoint itself though, I really enjoyed it in the end. Like I said earlier, it's a bit slow going at first, but the second half of the campaign really picks up, and I think the novelty of the PSVR aim controller makes up for the fact that it can feel a bit simplistic at times. The repetition of enemy types does great early on, and I think more could have been done with the freedom of movement to make for an alien environment that's ripe to explore, but I honestly believe the act of holding a weapon in 3D space makes up 
for some of the shortcomings in the game design because frankly it's just bloody brilliant fun. And I do hope that Impulse Gear gets another shot at this because I think a sequel could take all of the gunplay mechanics and really up the variety, but as a first attempt I think Farpoint is pretty damn good. Even the story, while occasionally hammy and poorly paced, has some good ideas and some very nice human moments to it. It's a cool game that looks great in virtual reality and is well worth buying if you've got a PlayStation VR headset and can afford to splash out for the PSVR aim controller bundle. Honestly, the weapon adds so much to the experience that I wouldn't recommend getting it without the gun, but I appreciate that it's an expensive proposition. Do check out my other video to see which other games will support the gun if that will help you make up your mind and I'll link it in the description below. I'm giving Farpoint a 7 out of 10 and you'll find a written review on pushquare.com if you want to check that out as well. Do let me know if you've got any questions about the game in the comments section and whether you're planning to pick it up. And remember to give the video a like if you enjoyed this review and subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined. Seriously your support means so much and I really appreciate you watching this far. Hopefully you've enjoyed and I'll see you next time.